Today we're going to build this triple jack-o-lantern and we're going to do it just with some commonly available hand tools. I'm starting with two five foot long fence boards that I picked up at the home center. Let me start by saying that this video was heavily inspired by two other videos. The first one was by my buddy Bruce Ulrich. Now Bruce took the CNC approach to building wooden jack-o-lanterns. And the other video was by another guy I know named Doug Linker. Doug's more of a wood carver in the YouTube space, but about four years ago, he did a video about making a wooden jack-o-lantern and he took the rustic wood approach using a pallet wood project and simple tools. Both of those are great videos in different ways. I'll link to both of them down in the video description. So when I was thinking about this project, I didn't just want to make one jack-o-lantern. I thought it would be kind of cool to make like a cluster of three jack-o-lanterns together. Uh, every other video or website that I've seen is just showing individuals, so I thought this is one thing that could be different and unique. I also thought this could be a great beginner project, so I'm going to try to limit myself to two or maybe three common hand tools. And I'm taking all the planing and joining out of the equation by just starting with a fence board that you can buy in your local home center. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I think this would actually look even better if you could use some really beat up rustic wood. So if you have some barn boards or if you have like old fence boards or or you know it'd be a great pallet wood project I think but I'm just starting with something really simple and easily available I'm going to be painting it too and you know on Halloween it's going to be dark so yeah I, I, I think it'll look great as a rustic wood project but I'm sure it'll look good just as a regular fence board project too so anyways let's get going I almost forgot I did also make a 3D sketch, just sort of to work out some ideas in my head. Mostly I just wanted to know how much wood I needed to buy. I'm going to be sort of following the 3D sketch, but none of, the, none of these measurements are really going to be that critical. I'll just list them off as we go through the project. So I'm first going to cut out the front and back of each pumpkin and I'm making mine all a different height. So I'm going to do a tall one that's nine inches and a sort of a medium one that's seven and one just a little bit shorter at six and a half inches tall. So it'll be front and back of each one. Gotta be careful because the ends of your fence boards might have a little split in them. So I'm gonna cut off the first two or three inches. Using a square help clamped against the board helps your saw make a nice straight cut. If all you have is a jigsaw, same thing by having a a framing square you can clamp the tight against the board for making a cut. Okay there's my three pumpkins and I already went away from the plans. I made the first one seven and a half, nine, six and a half. Now let's work on the faces next. So it's in pencil so they're a little hard to see but my wife and I have drawn some faces on the boards. And uh, one thing to keep in mind is we need to keep them in from the sides because you're going to have the side is going to be attached here. And I also wanted to keep them a bit up from the bottom so that, uh, you know, you don't have the like the LED candle just shining right through the mouth. You want to try to have that below it a bit. So. so now it's simply a matter of drilling a hole through each of the parts of the face and then I'll be using my jigsaw to cut out the eyes and the mouth and the nose and all that. have to use a pretty large drill bit because the jigsaw blade is pretty big. This is a fairly large jigsaw so it can be difficult to get all the little curves and stuff that you do and I kind of wish I had a smaller blade but it is what it is. Uh, snapped off so I'll have to glue that part back. If you have a scroll saw that can make some of the tight corners easier. A little bit easier to sort of swing the piece around into a sharp corner. You get a nice clean cut like that. Next I'll try a little bit of a work with a file or a rasp, some sandpaper, clean up Clean up the corners. So after some sanding, 
Here's my three pieces. This is the one I did on the scroll saw. These are the two that I did by hand with the jigsaw. This was the eye that snapped off and I've re-glued. By the time it's painted, it'll probably be completely invisible. And yeah, these two, they were a bit rough at first, but with the fly out and sanding, it, uh, it, it's fine. And again, if you're going for a bit more of a rustic and rough and ready approach, these are fine. This is cedar, so it sands and files real soft and easy. Um, in future, I mean, little fiddly bits like this are probably just a little challenging with the jigsaw trying to get into this thing like that. Uh, a, a simple, simpler shape probably works better with a handheld jigsaw. So with the faces cut out and sanded, I think the next thing I want to do is I'm going to cut out some side panels for these. So I got them just stood up roughly. And in keeping with the making it up as I go, I think I want them a little bit shallower front to back because right now these are the same size boards, obviously, which means these pumpkins are deeper and not square. A little bit of final sanding and then I position the pieces. You can use a hammer and some finishing nails. I'm going to use a nail gun because I have one and it's quick. And yeah, I forgot about glue. It's not really critical in a little project like this, but I'm going to quickly knock that apart and redo it with glue and, you know, the next two also. There we go. And you could hold them firmly or I'm going to use a clamp to put them together making sure they're flat and they're lined up across the back because I want this little instep here. And I will put in a little hole. One inch screw that will hold it tight together. Do the same on this side and from the bottom. For tops, I'm going to cut up what's left of my fence boards. I bought two five foot fence boards. I probably should have bought six foot or even eight foot. Would have just given me a little bit more room to work with, but I digress. For tops, I'm going to cut up what's left of my fence boards into three tops that will fit on top and I will glue and nail them into place also. I gave the lids an overhang of about a quarter inch on the front of each one. But before attaching the lids, I need stems. And so I took the, uh, the off cuts from cutting, cutting the sides skinny and I used the jigsaw to give them some interesting little cockeyed angles. And I'm going to glue them on to the tops first. I'm going to use a little dab of super glue under each, but then I will come back and put a screw in from below. And so there we go. This is a good stopping point. This is as far as Bruce took it. You just take the lights, pop them under it, and you're good to go. And you know, this is all the wood I had left. So I didn't buy enough wood to make a base, but through the internet magic of being a woodworker, I have more wood. So I'm gonna take this piece of scrap pine and cut it up because I really wanna have a base. And I'm also gonna paint the project, make it look a bit more interesting that point. But you could stop here. It's up to you. I mean, I can't make you do anything. Here's what it looks like. One, two, three, and interesting. Okay, so I now have a base and I also prepared two blocks that fit like that. And that'll give me sort of a reg registration mark. So let's position that. And just sort of find a spot that looks good to me. And then I will lift it straight off and then quickly tack those in place. And now I have a nice registration spot. 
This next step is entirely optional, but if you have a Forstner bit, I don't really like that these candles will be higher than this one, so I want to drill down a recess for them right here. There we go. Let's do a shallow one here just to keep it in. Just a shallow spot here to keep it from moving around much. I don't consider myself a great artist, but uh, I do think pumpkins should be more orange. So I just got some acrylic paint here. Pretty bright, but I'm planning to sort of keep it. Th there we go. Yeah. All right. I'm going to cut the video here till near the end. So for the stem, I added a bit of black to the orange and I'm trying to get something that's a bit more greenish because I want the stems to be different. I'm a little worried about it, but I think this will be okay. And I'm painting the base gray because the idea is pumpkins sitting on the sidewalk. So, or on the front step or something like that. So I didn't want this to be orange or anything. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. I got a concrete, concrete base and I got the pumpkins all ready. Let's let them dry now and we'll take a look at it later. There we go. So I realized I didn't really talk about the size of this and that's because I didn't, again, didn't really measure. I was making up as I go. I just sized it so that it was, you know, about an inch longer and an inch deeper than the unit. But just for completeness, this is just under 18 inches long and it is seven inches front to back. And these blocks, they're just cut so that they roughly fit within these openings and they give it a place to latch into place so that it doesn't move around. And the lights are just little LED tea lights that my wife picked up for me at the local dollar store. And uh, they have a, a little flickering effect which makes it look a little bit like a candle when it's inside. It's kind of neat. So that's all you need. A couple of fence boards, a saw, a drill, and a little bit of craft store paint, and there you go. So that's about it for this one, guys. We'll see you on the next one.